How's it everyone? Welcome back to another racket review right here on Open Court. I'm Ken and today I'm super excited because I'm reviewing a racket that I didn't even know existed until very recently. So that racket that I'm reviewing today, there's two versions. It's the new Wilson Ultra Pro Line. Let's check it out. So this new Wilson Ultra Pro line is actually an update to the Wilson Ultra Tour, which was first released way back in 2017. I never got a chance to try that racket, but I did review the Wilson Ultra 100 version 4 earlier this year. And to be honest, I didn't really like that racket. I don't really tend to like those power oriented frames. The Ultra line is Wilson's answer to Babala's Pure Drive line. And I don't really like those power oriented frames. They're very beefy, they're very sluggish. I tend to like something that has a little bit more control, less power, and also is a little bit more maneuverable, whippy, and head light. This Wilson Ultra Pro line checks all of those boxes. And I've already played with this racket and we'll get into my thoughts a little bit later, but I like this version a lot more than the Wilson Ultra 100. This uh, Ultra Pro, is meant for more advanced players who like to swing aggressively and want a little bit more control for their game. So the Wilson Ultra Pro line is more similar in feel and stiffness to the Wilson Burn line. It is a little bit on the firmer, stiffer side, which I really like. The blade and the Pro Staff and the Clash especially lean more towards the flexi and soft, comfortable racket. So I just want to say that the Wilson Ultra Pro line has a really nice glossy blue finish. I really like this paint job. It shines brilliantly in the sunlight and I think it's a really nice paint. There's only one difference between these two versions of the Ultra Pro line and that's the string pattern. So now let's take a look at the specs. So here are the specs to the Wilson Ultra Pro line. As you can see 97 square inch head. It's right around where I like. I like those 97, 98. The weight and balance is the same as my Speed Pro, 305 grams unstrung, 315 millimeter balance, so it should be nice and headlight and whippy. That beam is ultra thin, pun intended, 20.6 millimeters straight. I like thin beams because they're very aerodynamic, they cut through the air well. And as you can see, the only difference between the two versions of the Ultra Pro is the string pattern. There's one 16 by 19 and another 18 by 20. This 16 by 19 pattern is on the tighter side though. All right, so that does it for the intro for the Wilson Ultra Pro line. Let's jump on the court and let's play with these. So let's start with the pros of the Wilson Ultra Pro V4. I have to be honest, I never expected to like this racket as much as I did. I love this playtest so much, I'm honestly surprised. This racket felt very similar to my Speed Pro. The weight and balance are similar and the string pattern feels tight and controlled. Both versions are fantastic baseline sticks. I haven't felt this confident on my ground strokes with a new racket since the Diadem Elevate 98 I tested earlier this year. Honestly, I didn't feel that much difference between the two versions on ground strokes. The 1619 edition has a tighter pattern than most other 1619s, so I felt more connected on my aggressive shots. I got that low trajectory that I like to have and that kept my forehands from flying long. The 1619 version had a little more power so I like that on my two-handed backhand. With the 1820 version, if I was hitting an outstretched backhand, my shot would land inside the service box and I would be forced to play defense. I like to be the aggressor so the 1619 version helped me hit backhands with more pace and it didn't trap me in a defensive position as often. But regardless, the thin beam, small head size, and tighter string patterns provided great control and most advanced players will appreciate the specs. For a 97 square inch head, the Wilson Ultra Pro felt pretty stable on fast exchanges. The sweet spot felt fairly big, although not quite as big as the Yonex Percept 100D with its isometric shape. The racket doesn't twist much and doesn't get pushed around when trying to return heavy shots either. I really like this racket on return of serves. The torsional stability combined with the lower trajectory allowed me to swing away on returns and take control of the point. I could hit pinpoint accurate returns that landed just inside the baseline. The Ultra Pro had decent energy returns so my returns felt heavier and I could see my opponent struggle to get into position to return it. 
The thin beam allows me to swing fast and come over the ball with my natural wrist motion and that subtle wrist action gave me just the right amount of spin to drop the ball inside the court. I also really like the Wilson Ultra Pro on serves. The thin beam let the racket cut through the air very quickly on pronation for kick serves. Slice serves also felt very easy and fast. But the flat serve is where I noticed the biggest difference between the two versions. The 1820 version had noticeably less spin and power on all three of my serves than the 1619. The 1619 edition was purely a dream on serves. The more open pattern gave me a sharply diving kick serve and a low sliding slice serve. There was more power on flat serves as well. My flat serves with the 1820 had less force and a lower trajectory, so I hit a lot of flat serves into the net. I kept my form exactly the same when I tried hitting flat serves with the 1619 and the ball was clearing the net at a higher rate. I had great control from both though and I could hit where I was aiming on my serve with relative ease and my placement allowed me to dictate the flow of the point. I felt confident following my serve into the net. Speaking of the net, the Ultra Pro doesn't pack a lot of punch at the net but what it lacks in power it makes up for with control and maneuverability. This racket felt like a scalpel in my hand at net. I have a small swing on volleys anyway so I felt like I could carve up the court with my volleys. I simply blocked the ball in front and I was able to hit into open spaces or at my opponent's feet to force defensive replies. I'm more of a touch player at net anyway so I don't need that much punch. It's shocking to me how similar this Ultra Pro felt to my Speed Pro. The Speed packs a bit more power though because of the thicker beam and larger head. The thin beam really allowed me to knife through the slices, especially on my backhand side. The ball glided centimeters over the net and skidded low. I've been incorporating more chip and charge strategies particularly on my returns lately. The Ultra Pro's maneuverable weight let me consistently catch the ball in the center and the tight pattern gripped the ball well to produce low gliding slices. Hitting a perfect slice that barely clears the net is a super satisfying feeling and I felt I could do that pretty much from anywhere on the court. The feel of the Ultra Pro is more responsive than the Wilson Pro Staff X and the most recent Wilson Blade I reviewed earlier this year. The Clash is not even in this conversation as that racket is just super soft. I appreciated the firmer response from the Ultra Pro line, however this racket is far from crisp. It is still on the muted side. People think firm and muted is a contradictory description but in actuality a racket can be firm but still have little vibration that travels up the arm. I felt this Ultra Pro was exactly like that. Firm and muted for me isn't really a bad thing, but I definitely prefer something with more vibrations so I can feel the pop. Although this demo came strung with Alu Power, which is a pretty responsive string, I would be curious about how this racket would play with Tour Bite or Lynx Tour. Now let's get into the cons of the Wilson Ultra Pro and I have to admit, I'm struggling to find many negative things to say. The few cons are just really small nitpicks because I feel I have to fill this section with something. The firm but muted feel sometimes makes it difficult for me to hit volleys and drop shots with confidence. I actually hit quite a handful of low volleys in the net with both versions because I thought I caught the ball clean but I must have hit outside the sweet spot because the volley had less power to cross the net line. Secondly, I've never really liked Wilson grip palettes. They feel rounder in circumference than head and print grips. Wilson grips are similar to Yonex grips in the sense but Wilson handles have a slight flare at the bottom for more security and my kick serve pronation. I never felt like the Ultra Pro was going to come flying out of my hand when I flicked my wrist hard on kick serves. Lastly, I would say the overall power level is very low. I really had to use my legs and uncoil fiercely if I wanted to get any power on my serves. Same on my ground strokes. If I had to generate my own power, I really had to rotate my shoulders and drive through the ball. This isn't necessarily a bad thing if you are already great at generating torque but since I have a shorter reach, I prefer something with a little more free power. If I were to redesign this racket, I would make it a 98 with a 21mm straight beam and increase the static weight by 10 grams or so in the throat area so as not to lose the whippy headlight balance. The 1820 version is noticeably lower powered and I struggled to generate pace unless I was redirecting my opponent's pace. But that pretty much does it for the cons, I really don't have much negative to say. I was pleasantly surprised by this racket. So who is the Wilson Ultra Pro V4 racket for? It's for advanced ball strikers who can bring their own power and spin to the table. It's also for players who don't want something super muted like the most recent Yonex Percept series. 
The Ultra Pro has a firmer response but is still fairly muted so if you like those deader rackets so you can wail away on the ball, this racket could fulfill that need. This racket swings incredibly fast and if you play a lot of hard hitters, I think you'll have no problem getting this racket in front of your body to redirect that pace. I also wouldn't call the Ultra Pro a spin machine but because it's so aerodynamic with its thin beam, it can provide above average levels of spin. Overall, although I usually prefer tighter string patterns for my aggressive game, I like the 1619 version of the Ultra Pro better. That one has a bit more easy power and spin and the cross strings are really tight together so it actually feels more like a 1620. So I was incredibly surprised by how much I like this racket considering I didn't even know of its existence till about a month ago. I'm really glad I tried it and it might be my favorite current Wilson racket on store shelves. So have you guys tried this new Wilson Ultra Pro or maybe the Ultra Tour from a few years ago? How do you feel about it? Tell us in the comment section and if you are looking for a good baseline stick, maybe give the new Wilson Ultra Pro a try. Thank you for watching this review of the Wilson Ultra Pro right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on an open court.